this put out there. I have a pretty strong voice, and you're all going to be blown away if I don't move this off here a little bit. There we go. Well, good morning. Good morning. It is a blessing to be back in Manila. I was here the last time with my wife about a year and a half ago. We did the same course for, uh, for Zenit and uh, the folks here. She, we had a chance to look around and get to know the area a bit, and um, we really fell in love with the Philippines. It's wonderful to be back here and have a chance to share with you what God has laid on our hearts. So thank you for making the time this morning. I'm going to share, um, let me give you an idea of an overview, a little bit of an outline of what we're going to do today. First of all, there are, there are sort of three different types of people that are sitting here in this auditorium this morning. Some of you are just here for the day. You came to hear lecture, presentation to this morning, this afternoon, and you'll hopefully go away today being both, I hope, blessed and challenged by what you hear. Some of you will be staying on and meeting with me tomorrow and Wednesday where we are going to unpack the rest of this curriculum and you are a part of a certificate program, which means at the end of the day Wednesday, you get to go away and hopefully after three days be challenged and blessed. And then there's this very special group of people here who are going to stick it out till Friday, which means that you get to do the assignments that we're going to assign. You get to write papers and make presentations. And by Friday, you're going to get to leave here not only blessed and challenged, but also having gotten a little closer to your degree program. Amen? Amen. All right. How many of you are in that third group that will be with me till Friday? That's good. Because, see, if, if, if you fall asleep, then we're in big trouble. I've got to make sure that you stay engaged with me as we go throughout. So, so welcome. Thank you for this opportunity. When, when uh, Zenit first uh, put this together, she said on Monday we're going to open it up and we're going to have an opportunity for anyone invited to come uh, and be a part of this. So my goal today, I have to do two things with us today. First is I have to make sure that if you're just here for today, that you really walk away with an understanding of what this means to be a steward leader. But I also need to make this the first day of three days of lecturing for the other people that are in, that are in the class. And I'm going to see if we can't maybe accomplish both without confusing everyone. So you hang in there with me? Yes? Okay. I like, by the way, I'm, I love response. So. I was at a Baptist seminary for nine years, so hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord, all those things, all that is good, okay? So anything you want to do, let's, let's be vocal. I had the opportunity to, um, to preach in some wonderful African-American churches in Philadelphia, and of course you get tremendous response if you've ever been at an African-American church. They are into the sermon, right? They are into the sermon. And I always used to love it until somebody halfway through my sermon would always end up yelling out, help him, Jesus! And I never knew what that meant. I never knew what that meant. I, I, you know, I, I wanted to take it positively, that maybe, you know, I was, I was just, they were all being taken to another level of heaven or something, and we all wanted to help us to get there. Um, but I'm not sure if somebody in the back was saying, what's this, what this white guy trying to do preach to us? You know, help him, Jesus. So if, if you feel like that's appropriate, you yell that out today. More than happy to have a help, help him, Jesus, somewhere along the way. But I do hope we have some fun. Um, and from my heart, here is something I hope you hear from me this morning. Uh, this, is, this is sort of promoted as a lecture. And we're going to do, we're going to talk some theology, because this is a theological seminary. I'm a systematic theologian, and Zenit is hoping I'm going to talk some theology, so we're going to do some theological work today. But my prayer for all of you, and, and frankly for all of us, including me and everybody out there, everybody who sees this on videotape, is that God will use this day to help you on your journey of becoming a more faithful, committed, joyful steward of everything in life. You see, if, if this isn't an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to transform us in some way, well, then it's just an academic exercise. And I don't know about you, but I really don't want to give a whole day to an academic exercise. I want to open up my spirit and my heart and my mind to what God would do to me and in me and through me today. Amen? Yes. Do you all join me in that? Yes. See, I think God has 
a message for every person in this room today. I don't know what that is. I'm always amazed when we present this, different people hear different things. It's like a good sermon, right? You're always amazed at what different people hear and how the Holy Spirit took some words you never thought were all that important and opened them up in somebody's heart. And so today, as we go through all of this, I'm going to share with you what's on my heart, and I just pray that the Holy Spirit will use this. And we'll give to every person here a special blessing and challenge. Now, for that to happen, two things have to happen. Not only does God have to show up, I have to, to talk, but you have to be ready. You have to be ready to hear what God would have for you to hear today, right? We have to be responsive. So I'm going to open this up with a word of prayer and ask that God would be in our midst and would prepare us for the word that he has for you today. The reason you got up this morning and got in your cars and fought the traffic and got to hear, um, I don't want you to miss it. So let's pray together. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for this wonderful place where your name is lifted high, where young men and women come here, Lord, to prepare their hearts and their minds and their spirits for ministry in all kinds of different ways. I thank you, Lord, for the faithful faculty, for the, the faithful administration, for Dr. Tim and his leadership, for Joanna and Zenit and, and all the work and toil here, Lord, that your name might be lifted up and that your kingdom might come and be built both here in the Philippines and all across South Asia. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful place and for its history. And today, Lord, we get to be a little slice of that history. As people look back on ATS 10 years from now, this day, this moment in this room will be a part of that history. And we know, Lord, that you do not waste any moment. So we come here ready with our hearts open, with our spirits yielded to you, that we might hear Give us, Lord, ears to hear, hearts to receive, spirits to consider what you have for us today. Help us, Lord, to go from this place not only a little more educated, but both blessed and challenged by your word, because your word is truth. And we commit that to you and everything we have in these next few moments together. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we ready? All right. Can everybody see this okay? All right, because this will be a primary source of the information that we're going to be talking about today. All right, it's 945, so here's the plan. Um, I'm going to share, as I said, by the end of the day, an overview of what this means to be a steward leader. Everything that we have been doing all the way back, Zenit mentioned um, a book in 2000, InterVarsity, published a book of mine called Stewards in the Kingdom. And it was my attempt to create a foundational theology of the faithful steward, because I couldn't find one out there. And I believe that God, because of my unique journey, had brought me to a place where maybe this was one of my contributions to the kingdom. In that, there is a couple of basic foundational pieces of theology that undergird everything else that we've been teaching and speaking on for the last 18 years. I'm going to spend the morning building those two for you. Because regardless of where you go from here, if you understand these two seminal pieces of theology, then you'll understand kind of what, what supports all the rest of the things we do when we talk about what it means to be not only a steward leader, but, but a faithful steward. Then this afternoon, we will un we'll take it into this realm of leadership. What does it mean when we're called to lead? What is it, how does it impact everything we do through the heart and the life of a leader? So, theology this morning, because I know you're awake, you've had caffeine, right? And then we'll apply it this afternoon when maybe we're not quite as, as sharp, but we'll make it fun and exciting as we can. That's a little bit about the journey. We okay with that? Two things this morning, this afternoon, we'll walk through the bigger architecture of it. Um, and I think, do you want to still take a break this morning? Okay. This, I, I'm terrible at that, by the way. I just get going, and hours pass, and people are saying, can we please take a break? So remind me, um, at the end of the first one, we'll take a short break, and we'll be done by noon, and then we'll come back about 1 o'clock and walk through this afternoon and probably be done between 3 and 3.30 or so. Does everybody see the map? I like to know where I'm going before I get started on something. So that's, that's the picture. So hang with me, and we'll go from there. <clears throat> John 10.10 10 says... Everybody can almost quote this with me, can't, can't you? 
Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, life to the full. We all know that passage, don't we? And we love that passage, don't we? There's a problem. It's that that's not really John 10.10. 10. That's the second half of John 10.10. 10. Extra credit today, especially for those of you in my MBA class. What's the first half of John 10.10? 10? Yeah, a few of you know that, don't you? The enemy comes to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. We can't remember the second half without understanding the first half. Jesus is talking about being the great the shepherd. And the shepherd know the sheep, and they, they come through the gate, that he is the gate. And sometimes the enemy comes over the wall, but those who really know him come through him and come through the gate. And he says, watch out in this world because there is an enemy out there who has an agenda. And you're the target. And his agenda is to kill and to steal and to destroy. But I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. The reason that it's important for us to keep the two halves of John 10.10 10 together is because as we seek the abundant life in Christ, and, and just let me ask, I mean, wouldn't all of us, don't we really crave to know life in all its fullness that Jesus promised? Do you? This is where everybody says yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the Christian life. I want to know that, Jesus. I want to know the life abundant. But what he says to us is, I have that for you, but we need to understand that the life abundant sits in proximity to the agenda of the enemy to steal and to kill and to destroy. And if we can't miss, we can't get the latter until we understand what is happening with the former. I believe that too many followers of Jesus live their lives in bondage to the work that's being done by the one that came to kill and steal and destroy. And because of that bondage, we have not experienced fully the abundant life that Christ came to give us. Does that make sense? The journey of the faithful steward is a journey of freedom. It is a journey of one by one naming the chains and the bondages that we have put on ourselves, taking them off and letting them fall. Day by day, week by week, month by month, the freedom that God has for us. Do you see that picture? Because the abundant life in Christ is unchained. It's free that we can go out now and be used by God to set other people free. And that's really a synopsis of everything we're going to talk about. But I want you to have that mental image in your head because I think it's very helpful for us if we think about those chains. We're going to talk about how we put those chains on, what those chains might be, and more importantly, how we take them off through the power of the Holy Spirit to live for Jesus. Ready? Here we go.